Well, the third space is a concept that I developed four or five years ago. And what it looks at is the concept of micro transitions. Now, when we hear the word transition, we think big transition. So transition into a new role, transition into parenthood, a restructure. Now, those big transitions are very real, but they're rare and infrequent. But what I've identified is that during our day, we make thousands of micro transitions where we move between different roles and environments. So we may go from an internal meeting where it's about strategy to an external meeting where it's about the client and selling to them. We may go from home to work. So we make all these micro transitions where we move between different roles. And the third space is the gap in between. So the first space is the role you're doing now. Second space is the role you're about to go into. Third space is that micro transitional period. And what I've identified is what you do in that gap has a huge impact on your capacity to perform in the second space. It's important to develop a third space for two main reasons. Number one, so you don't carry the baggage from that previous interaction into the second. You show up almost clean. Because when I was working with sales teams, they'd have a bad sales situation which they carried to the next. And also I worked in a call center, well I was a consultant in a call center for a while. And what I found is when they had a bad call, they'd carry that interaction into the next call, they'd be aggressive. So the first part is how do I shut the first space down, learn from it, get over it, and don't carry the baggage with me. The second part is how do I show up for the next space? And what I found is people were so busy, they just rush through that transitional period and they didn't show up with clarity of purpose. What am I trying to achieve here? What is my intention? What's my behavior like? They're in such a rush, they weren't self-aware about how they affected that space. They didn't even know what they wanted to achieve and they didn't have clarity of purpose. So. The third space is really important from those two perspectives. How do we shut down the first and how do we show up well for the second space? So some examples of third spaces are um, well varied. I got an email the other day from a HR manager within Deloitte who said um, they saw one of the partners uh, who was supposed to be in a meeting, sitting in the cafe, just staring out the window. And she went up to him and said, aren't you supposed to be in that meeting? He said, yeah, but I've just got here and I'm doing my third space. What he was doing is sitting there going, this is what I want to achieve from the meeting. This is the outcome I want. This is how I want to behave. And this is how I feel right now. So he was preparing himself. He was actually going to be late, but he thought that was a good enough payback to show up prepared rather than rushed and unprepared. Yeah, one of the most popular ones is the transition from work to home. So I have so many people email me about third spaces between work and home. Um, I had an example of an executive who used to sh walk in the door on the Blackberry, push the kids out of the way. His wife would ask him to do things. He'd say, not now, I've got to send this email. And he'd show up still in work headspace. And he said what that did was put everyone in a bad mood and the interaction for the rest of the evening was awful. He's, so what he does now is he has a 40 minute drive home. He returns phone calls for 20 minutes. Then with 20 minutes to go, turns the phone off, puts the Beatles White Album in, listens to this music as he goes home. Last five minutes, he starts to picture how he wants to walk in the door, what sort of father he wants to be, what, how he wants to interact with his family. And he actually sent me an email and said, you've saved my marriage. And I said, that's a bit over the top. He says, no, seriously, you have saved my marriage. I walk in, I have amazing interaction with the kids. My relationship with my wife's completely different because how I walk in the door sets up the tone for the evening. And now I walk in calm, engaged, focused. He said, I still do work from sort of 8.30 till about 10 o'clock, but I've already had two to three great hours with the family and that's the quality time. What I often find is leaders show up unprepared and unaware of their behavior. So they can be brash, they can be aggressive, um, and they don't have clear strategy. One of the things that teams crave is, is clarity around, you know, what are they trying to achieve? What are they working on at the moment? And so often teams don't understand that. So if a, if a leader uses the third space every time he or she is about to interact with the team, one, they show up 
with better emotions. And as we know, emotions are contagious. They show up with more clarity about what they want from the team. And also, if they use that third space to picture, when I go into this meeting, what sort of a leader do I want to be? Do I want to be empathetic, focused, compassionate? Their behavior dramatically improves. So I think it's an absolutely essential thing for leaders to do because they are on display 24 seven when they're with their staff. So if I could give one piece of advice about the third space in the transitional period, as you're transitioning into that second space, just think, what is my intention here? What, is, what am I trying to achieve? And when we get clarity about intention, we change behavior and we improve outcomes.